In this video, we are going to look at how we graph a line that is in standard form. When we say standard form, we mean AX plus BY equals C. So up until this point, we've only graphed lines that have been in slope-intercept form, which is Y equals MX plus B. Well, look at our first method here. In order to graph a line in standard form, what we need to do is we're going to rewrite the equation in that slope-intercept form that we are very comfortable with. So let's take a look at our example. I have a line represented by 3x minus 4y equals negative 8. I can see this is definitely not in slope-intercept form because the x and the y terms are both on the left side of the equation. Um, in order for it to be in slope-intercept form, the y variable would be isolated. So in order to turn our equation into slope-intercept form, that's what we're going to do. We're going to isolate the y variable. So let's rewrite our equation so we have some space to work. And then remember what I said, in order to write our equation in the form y equals mx plus b, we need to isolate the y variable in the equation 3x minus 4y equals negative 8. So the first thing I want to do is subtract 3x from both sides. That will allow me to have my y variable term by itself on the left side. Now on the left side, when I combine like terms, 3x and the minus 3x, those are like terms. So I can combine them, and that just combines for 0x or just 0, which leaves me with the negative 4y by itself. Then I have my equal sign. Now on the right side, I have negative 8, which is a constant, and then I have minus 3x. That's a variable term. Those are not like terms. I can't combine them. The only thing I'm going to do on that side of the equation is switch the order so it becomes negative 3x minus 8. Because I want to see my x term first before my constant because I'm comparing it to y equals mx plus b where the x comes before the constant. So now in order to isolate my y fully I just have to divide everything in the equation by negative 4. So when I do negative 4 divided by negative 4 there's where I get my 1y. So my y is completely isolated. Now I have negative 3 divided by negative 4 which simplifies to a positive 3 fourths x and then notice how I have that negative 8 divided by negative 4. That also simplifies to positive, and it becomes plus 2. So now I see my familiar y equals mx plus b form. So now I'm ready to identify my slope and to identify my y-intercept. So here's my equation, y equals 3 fourths x minus, or I'm sorry, y equals 3 fourths x plus 2. The plus 2 is in my b spot. And remember, B stands for beginning. That means we begin at the y-intercept, which is 0, 2. And then my slope is 3 fourths. And if you remember, a positive numerator tells me I'm moving up 3 units, and a positive denominator tells me I'm moving right 4 units. So I want to begin at my y-intercept, which is 0, 2. And then from my beginning point, I'm going to move up 3 units and 4 units to the right, and I'm going to put another ordered pair. I'm going to continue that same pattern, up 3 units and 4 units to the right, but you'll notice now I'm only working in quadrant 1. There is another section of the line that would extend into quadrant 3. So I want to, instead of move up 3 units and right 4 units, I want to move down 3 units and left 4 units. So those two negative movements, down and left, I would have a negative numerator and a negative denominator, which would still simplify to a positive 3 fourths. But that allows me to get some ordered pairs in quadrant 3. So I go down 3 units, 4 units to the left again, and now I have 5 ordered pairs, and I can put my line through them and finish it off with the arrows. The other way that we can graph a line in standard form is to use the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So let's take a look at how we would use the x-intercept and the y-intercept to graph a line. So first, let's make sure we understand what the x-intercept and the y-intercept are. So we can see from this image the y-intercept is an ordered pair that sits on the y-axis and the x-intercept is an ordered pair that sits on the x-axis. And then when you draw the line between those two intercepts, you have now graphed your line using the intercepts. Let's look at it in a little bit more detail. Here's an actual line. We can see that the y-intercept is at the point 0, 6, 
and the x-intercept is at the point negative 4, 0. So you'll notice that those each um, intercepts, the y is sitting on the y-axis and the x is sitting on the x-axis. Now, all y-intercepts will have something in common. They will all have 0 in the um, x-coordinate of the ordered pair. So the first value of the ordered pair will always be 0 if you are the y-intercept, because in order to sit on the y-axis, your x-value has to be 0. And then all x-intercepts will also share something in common. Their second value of their ordered pair will always be 0. So the first value will be the x-value where it crosses the x-axis, but then the second value of the ordered pair will always be 0. So you'll notice the zeros in the same spots whether you're finding the x-intercept or the y-intercept. That comes in really helpful because when we graph using the intercepts, we make ourselves a little table of values for x and y and we go ahead and designate 0 in the x spot for when we're finding the y-intercept, and then we designate 0 in the y spot for when we're finding the x-intercept. And then what we'll do to find the y-intercept, we'll take the value of 0 and we'll substitute it in for x into the equation in order to find the value of y, and then we'll switch that process, we'll take 0 and substitute it in for y in order to find the value of x. This method is best used when the intercepts come out to be integers. So these values of y and x that we find, it's nice when those are integers to use this method. And I'll show you on the next um, example how we can tell if we're going to get integers or not. So let's go ahead and see how we would put our plan into action. So I want to graph the line represented by the equation 2x plus 3y equals 12. So I see I have standard form here. Um, but I'm going to use the x and y intercept to graph this line. Now, on the earlier um, example, I said you should use this method when you um, know that your x-intercept and your y-intercept when they're going to be integers. Well, here's how you can tell. So you take your constant on the right side of the equation. If that constant is divisible by both coefficients, so in this case the coefficients are 2 for the coefficient of x and 3 the coefficient of y, if the constant is divisible by both of those, then you know that you will have integers as your intercepts. So let's first check if 12 is divisible by 2, and that equals the integer 6, so I'm good there. And then let's check is 12 divisible by 3. Yes, that gives me the integer 4, so I know that my intercepts will be integers, which is nice. So let's set up our table of x and y. So in order to find the y-intercept, I'm going to substitute in 0 for x. And in order to find the x-intercept, I'm going to substitute in 0 for the y-value. So let's start by letting x equal 0 in our equation. So I'm going to set up that skeleton that we've done in the past. Um, so I'm going to rewrite the equation, and everywhere I see x, I'm replacing it with 0. So I have 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 12. Well, 2 times 0 is just 0. So the left side of my equation just simplifies to 3y. So I get 3y equals 12, which tells me y equals 4. So I can fill that in my table. So that gives me the ordered pair 0, 4. So that is my y-intercept. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to plug in 0 for y. So 2x plus 3 times 0 equals 12. So notice there's my skeleton, and I've replaced the y value with 0. And after I simplify, 3 times 0 just becomes 0. So on the left, all I have is 2x and then the equal sign. So 2x equals 12. And after I divide by 2, I get x equals 6. So I can fill in my table. And the other ordered pair is now 6, 0. And that is my x-intercept. So let's plot my intercepts. So 0, 4 for the y-intercept. And 6, 0 for the x-intercept. And then I can connect those two with a straight line, put my arrows, and I am finished.